Mortgages should be illegal because you're getting robbed every month. With a typical $200,000 30-year mortgage, you'll end up paying over $400,000 after interest. Hi, I'm John Commuta, creator of the Transforming Debt into Wealth system. My proven system can eliminate your mortgage and all your debts. Let me send you a powerful free CD. For your free CD, call 347-326-9741. I am Brian the Butcher Brown. Joined as always by the number one son of Mikey Delicious Dolan. What's up, buddy? Can you do it? What's up? What's and up, of course, uh, You know, I felt like I unwrapped a pair of uh, socks on Christmas because uh, Nick Frank is back. What's up, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Doug? Nice, uh, nice, nice intro music. I was feeling that. That was good. Hey, I wanted to play something else, but I couldn't find an unedited version, so I figured I'd go with the tried and true, you know, run DMC. Merry Christmas, shitheads. Yeah. Thank you. Merry Christmas to you, too. Yeah, yeah no, thank you. You need to get the, uh, the unedited version, because I'm sure the FCC's all over us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm sure that they're hanging on our every word. they got their list of it, nine <laughs> words that we can't say. They're just waiting, yeah. to, nail, yeah. they're waiting to nail the big fish. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was worried about. Didn't want couple, to get shut down. A couple minnows swimming by like us. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> Mr. Uh, Mr. Racino in the chat room. The uh, league brutal season what seven? Season six champion? <sighs> well, I guess season seven, dude. We're getting old. Yeah, no. I'm just glad Neil didn't win. Congrats to well, I'm glad Neil didn't win. I'm glad he got crushed and got rolled over, to be quite honest. But at the same time, I didn't want to see Dom winning either. So either oh, way, my on. fantasy season sucked. Yeah. Well, at least you're not bitter about it, dude. You know, at least yeah, you don't take it personally, and uh, you know you're not going to be a fucking baby about it. Uh, you no, know, that doesn't even matter because Neil had won, you know, the regular season title. That's why, you know, me being a crybaby, uh, I didn't want him to win. I didn't want him to get all the money. And, you know, Neilan's fucking hysterical. He, he'd be hysterical if he won, but it's even better that he lost because he just is going to go ape shit about this. So it'll be awesome. <laughs> I'm still going to kill him for giving you Gunkowski dub. So it'll all be worth it in the end. Listen, listen, I worked the trade line this year, okay? I built the team from the depths of despair with all the injuries I had. And you know what? It should have been me in the championship game, but your shit heel brother, you know, eked out a lucky one point win against me in the first round of the playoffs. So well, congratulations. Teams uh, hurt but you, if we would have played what's that? I said those special teams will hurt you. Yeah. Yep. 
that's exactly the way you want to go down when the special teams blocks a punt and returns it for a touchdown. So congratulations, Dahl. I'm glad you took third place since Mike Giustino forgot to start an active running back. So good for you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you can win, win a game when Romo goes down first play of the game. That's your quarterback, and you get a big goose egg out of him. But, hey, whatever. It's Christmas. That's a good present, right? Christmas. Uh, speaking of Christmas, actually, not, actually having nothing to do with Christmas, I want to go over the fantasy mm-hmm. football. I'm sorry, the fantasy MMA totals thus far. I'm sure you guys went over them last week. Um, Absolutely. You know, it's big this by my absence. I was brown nosing at my uh, company holiday party. <laughs> I was uh, right. our memory, Frank. What's that? Um, okay, so uh, you guys did it, but I'm sure four events down. Uh, me and Dolan are tied, 66. The 66 tied for first, and Mr. Dubs is in uh, last place with 56. So Ooh. I'm actually very interested for a pick tonight, uh, Dolo, because I, I, you know, some of my picks I'm thinking you probably went the other direction on. So this week might be uh, a breakaway week for one of for one of us. Yeah, we'll see. I'm curious to see as well, dude. I want to see where you went the other way on it. Uh, yeah, it'll be very interesting, and uh, you know, for shits and giggles, we'll have Dubs pick too. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah, because, yeah, well, thank you. Thank you. Too, only because my uh, my retarded brother is at the home this weekend, so he's uh, he, he can't he can't give his pick. So uh, you know he probably picked the plant in the corner anyway. That's drooling fuck. Well, well, your, that little, your little cousin when you're uh, when you're playing outside, we'll tell him that it counts. Yeah, well, yeah exactly, exactly. <laughs> my niece who was born four days ago, we'll have her pick. She'll probably kill them. Oh, so next week we'll have her. Jesus. We'll have her in third place. Dubs in fourth. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I don't want to sound like a piece of shit, but I'm going to have you two guys. I'm interested in you guys' picks first. So you guys are going to go first, and I'm going to go last. That's how we're going to work this, okay? Whatever. Dude, what, Nick, how that's 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 right it. It'll, be, it'll be the halfway point, so after uh, after Friday we'll be halfway done with the uh, – Okay. With this, uh, All right. That's that's All right, so. for Dubs though, dude. It's halfway through the year now. Normally he pulls those tricks like maybe like the eighth event, ninth yeah. event, <laughs> where like he makes everybody go first, and then he literally just either picks the opposite or pretty much piggybacks well, off you're it. Already, you're already picking defense stuff, but what you realize if you get if you just pick all the fights correctly, it doesn't matter what anybody else picks. <laughs> <laughs> that's where I was looking at. Like I don't give a shit what you pick. I'm just gonna pick correctly, and I can't lose. Yeah, no, he actually, if you get something right, it actually is de- 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 deficient yeah. on his points. Like, he loses exactly. points if you get something right. I mean, I can understand, like, week like week 10, I can see you have to play some defense, but just pick Not week well, 10, big really. boy. Defense wins championships. So I'm going to start tonight. <laughs> true. And uh, depending on how ridiculous it seems to go opposite from you guys, we'll see how it, how it pans out. No, it's oh, awesome, well. dude. Let's It'll make it interesting. Here. Hey, Frank, All right, well, this before we get moving, Dubs, Frank, how does it feel, though, Frank? You got a little comp right now. You nervous? I know. I noticed there was there was no fucking party last week. You were home listening to the show with your blubbering <laughs> lips, with your mommy rubbing your hiney and telling you that you're special and it's different than I, everybody else's. You think I was avoiding you? Oh, I have no doubt, dude. I have no doubt. Please, I welcome I welcome the competition. I've been getting bored. Wait till you see some of my picks tonight. I'm trying to spy you. Oh, oh wow. Blah, wow. Wow. <laughs> Wow. Well, well, I guess jump right in. Let's get into it, dick bag. I like it. I'm just going to, uh, just so everybody knows, a couple people that are going to order the fights, they're Friday night this week, not Saturday because of New Year's Eve. So they're Friday, and I think it's back to uh, back to 10 o'clock. So Friday at 10 is uh, uh, that's UFC good. 141. Yeah. Nice, nice. All right, so uh, Friday is UFC 141, which pits the uh, big boys, Brock Lesnar versus Alistair Overeem in the main event. And, uh, Obviously, a lot of hype for this fight. You pointed out a couple weeks ago, Franco, how Alistair Overeem skipped the country to avoid his drug test. Obviously, he came back clean, but he's got some extensive drug testing to go through uh, after the fight. But, uh, you know, everybody's been waiting for this, and I know I'm excited. But, as I said, I'm going to throw it to you first, Franco. Then I want to hear what you got to say, Dolo, and then we'll see what I pick after that. All right? So, Franco, let me hear what you think about this fight. Yes, sir. Um well, both guys obviously are, are, are decorated. You know, Overeem has been around a lot longer than Lesnar, but Lesnar is the former UFC champion. The whole billing for this fight was, you know, the size. Overeem 6'5", 256, Lesnar 6'3", 265. But, you know, there is an experience difference there. Overeem has, uh, you know, 46 career fights. He's got 19 wins by submission. He's actually three years younger than Lesnar. Um, he's just been in the game a lot longer. He's 31, Brock 34. He is uh, over and undefeated in his last 11 fights. He hasn't lost since 07. Pretty much since he came up to heavyweight, he's looked pretty good. He hasn't fought 
top ten competition, but he's he's fought some bigger name guys. Um, this is this is actually he's been more active than Brock. This is going to be his third fight in the last twelve months, and Brock hasn't fought uh, in fourteen months. So, you know, the last time he came up a bit of a layoff was against Shane Carwin, where he did take a beating in that first round and, and was able to recover, but it did look like the layoff hurt him a little bit. But I think more than that, I think Brock at that point in his career, I think he was, um, his, you know, there was there was deficiencies within his body from that illness. I don't think he was full strength. I don't think that um, he ever really fully recovered. I think at this point now he is recovered. He, he, he got the surgery to repair himself. He looks bigger and fuller. He looks healthy in the press mm. conferences and the workout videos. He definitely looks like he finally got himself healthy. He looks like he's stronger than ever. This is it, 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 it's a must win for Brock Lesnar. He can't lose two in a row. They pay him a lot of money. He's a big draw. He wants to get back to that title. He is 34 years old. Overeem, uh, he wants to win. He wants to prove that he belongs. But Overeem can come in and lose and still recover and get some big fights. I think it's much more of a must win for Brock than it is for Overeem. I'm going to be rooting for Lesnar. I, I'm a big Brock Lesnar fan. Overeem, uh, I could sort of take him or leave him at times. But, uh, you know, I'm actually going to take no. over him. I'm taking over him to knock him out in the first round. No, he didn't. Oh. I think Whoa. That, uh, I just think that, uh, that the bottom line is that Brock does not like to get hit. And his only game plan is going to be to get inside, to shoot on over him, to get him to the ground. Over him, is, he has incredible knees. I think that he's going to hit him with a knee relatively early in the fight and stun Brock. Brock's never going to recover. And uh, Overeem is a you know a, a really solid finisher. He's finished you know 23 fights. So uh, I'm really you know, even though I'm picking Lesnar, I'm sorry, even though I'm picking Overeem, I'm going to be rooting for Lesnar. But uh, I'm picking Overeem first round knockout. Wow. Wow. I'm sorry, I was hyperventilating. It's pretty thing into a bag. <laughs> I no, I, I get it, dude. Uh, and I know, I mean. Yeah, you changed though from about two, three weeks ago when we were talking about this. Maybe even a month ago, you were saying you thought uh, you know Lesnar was going to be able to you know get him down and pound him out. But I, I just you know it's it's completely up in the air, and then that's what has to happen, right? Lesnar is if he can weather the early storm and take down over him, I think he's going to win the fight. And and he does look geeked up. He looks you know very shredded, and you know he he definitely I think is is ready to go. <laughs> What does concern me is, you know, he just <laughs> he does not like to get hit in the face, like he said, and he he doesn't seem to respond too well to that. Um, Overeem, as as much as I hate on him, and you know, he, he's he's certainly a polarizing figure. He's finished all but two of his uh, 35 victories, dude. He's got 19 submissions and 14 uh, knockouts, which is pretty insane when you think about it. Granted, it's transcended two different weight classes and, and a couple different organizations. And, I mean, he's fought guys like Vitor Belfort, Shogun, Big Nog, Liddell, Krokop, Mark Hunt. Uh, you know, these are guys who are all, in, you know, from 205 to the heavyweight division and, and you know, I, I think, you know, I think Overeem's dangerous. I think he has something to prove here. I just, I think, I think this is Lesnar's night. I think Lesnar is truly going to make this last run, and this is all he has. And maybe it's me hoping. Maybe it's, you know, it's going to be factual. We'll see. I just, I think that, I think he wants to put Overeem and all the naysayers to bed because I think he feels that Overeem may be, uh, you know, a figure that he can prop up and put up there as, as the peop one of the main people that would probably knock Brock for his lack of experience and kind of would say he's a bit of a freak show still with this, you know, this, uh, you know, the wrestling transition into um, into MMA. But don't get it twisted. Overeem respects Brock. He's mentioned how good of a wrestler he is and things like that, but he did reference that Brock tends to turtle up when he gets hit. I just think that... I think Overeem's going to come out. I think he's going to, you know, look to finish early because we've seen cardio be an issue for Overeem. He pretty much gassed in that Verdum fight and couldn't finish Verdum and was losing the stand-up. I think Brock weathers the storm. I think Brock gets him down, and I think Brock pretty much lays on him and, and, and beats him up a little bit. I mean, Overeem has the guard. Like I said, he's got 19 subs, so don't think that it's going to be a passive guard. So I don't want to necessarily say Brock's just going to manhandle him and take him down and, and pretty much just smother him uh, and, and finish him. I have Lesnar winning via decision. I think Lesnar's going to get it done, and I think this props him up to, to go and fight JDS. Wow. Wow. Very good points by both of you now. For the five I really rounds, don't, uh, you think he's going five rounds? Yeah. Oh, is it a five-round fight, dude? 
Yeah, it's a, oh, yeah, I thought uh, it was three. It's a main event. Uh, but yeah, yeah but I mean, it's, it's it's such a crapshoot, uh, you know, about how how it's going to go, you know, whether it's three, is it five? Uh, I mean, fuck, uh, kind of would have to pretty much put my foot in my mouth saying that he isn't going <laughs> to be able to finish him. But uh, yeah, I don't think either of these guys have stamina to go fucking five rounds. Um, you know what? Let me get uh, let me get Lesnar via via third round. Because in my mind, that would have been the last round anyway, and they would have been for the pit finish. So, can we give their uh, Lesnar the uh, you know strikes? So, I guess you want to call it TKO. All right, I like how you think on your feet there. Uh, you know, I, I definitely think uh, Frank has a solid point. Obviously, with uh, Overeem being an accomplished striker and all, but uh, I, I don't think uh, Overeem is going to be able to stop Lesnar's takedowns. I think Lesnar is going to be able to get through. He's going to take him down and. Uh, you know, he's obviously going to pound him out. Um, you know, I don't think he's going to do it in the first round. I think, you know, uh, Overeem's going to be able to get away from a couple of them, maybe stay along the cage, uh, work his way out. But uh, I, I I, don't know. Like, I, I obviously am scared that if Overeem does get off some good strikes that Brock's going to get knocked out because it's obvious he doesn't like to get hit. But, you know, you got to think that he went back to the gym and, and worked on that. You know, his striking, obviously, it isn't going to become world-class overnight, but he's definitely very motivated. He's such a sick athlete that I think he's going to probably uh, TKO him in the second round. He's going to get him down. He's going to wear him down and eventually uh, take him out in the second round. You've got that from your think... brother, dude, in the chat room. That's bullshit. <laughs> What's that? Uh, your brother picked that in the chat room, and I think that's where you got it from, and then you get a monster Dick Hansen backing it up, so. Nice, nice. Well, I think Dick Hansen and Bill Brown one are two very smart people. So, you know, obviously I'm copying off of them. But uh, we got a phone call. Somebody wants to get in on this. So, Maybe the Green Bastard. Uh, I'm going to go to him. And, uh, I, mean, obviously, I think it's Green Bastard, but I'm not sure. It doesn't come up with an actual phone number, so I'm curious who this is. So, hold on a second. Corey, you're on the air. Hello? Devon? Anybody there? Ah, uh, green bastard got us again. Wow. Well, that was a big letdown. I was really curious <laughs> who this might be. Are you still there? Hello? Maybe it's Santa. Jeez. Santa? I don't know. Well, like a number doesn't come up. It says Devin dot mask, which I I figured I'd go to and see what's up. Last chance. Are you there, caller? Uh, I got right, booing in the off. chat room. Big those booing him. <laughs> yeah. Boo. <laughs> Well, he ruined that. I was really curious who it was because I was trying to figure out who it was. <laughs> Look at the league Son camp. Son of a bitch. <laughs> the league camp writes fucking green bastard. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Green bastard. Green a bastard. Parts unknown. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. Well, now that he derailed the show, uh, congratulations, green bastard. I guess we'll move on to the uh, co-main event on the night, which uh, is a very tough fight for me to call. Uh, Pitts, uh, Nate Diaz versus Donald the Cowboy Cerrone. And uh, I'm going to need a little bit of time to, to think about this, so I want to hear your guys' opinion. Dolo, you go first. Tell me what you think. All right, nice punt there, Dubs. Appreciate it. <laughs> Thank um, you. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a very interesting fight. I, I, both of these guys, I feel like they're mirror images of each other. Um, both like to strike. They, they have good striking. Uh, you know, Cerrone uh, finished his, uh, what was it, two fights ago? I think he got his first KO, and, and Dubs had... Picked that the 35 fights prior and got it right that time, so he threw himself a fucking parade like he just won the Super Bowl. Um, and I think he pick. actually, I think he finished at the same time as Cerrone threw that last punch, so that might have been why my house fell off its foundation. But, um, you know, I, I think it's, it's going to be a good fight, dude. Diaz has that pawing style, and, and he likes to kind of get in there and mix it up, and, and Cerrone's certainly not a guy who shies away from the strikes. And the thing I like about Diaz's last fight, I mean, Granted, he did it to a uh, um, mirror, uh, I should say, you know, shadow of who Takanori, Takanori Gomi is now. Um, but he, he threw that pawing strikes, the pawing strikes out, but they were more crisp. They were more precise, and they had a little more oomph on them. So that was what made Gomi go down and actually go for the takedown on, uh, you know, one of Cesar Gracie's students and, and get choked out rather promptly. But... I think Diaz looked awesome at 155. He was coming back after going 2-2 two and two at 170. So I think he's back where he needs to be in his natural weight class. Uh, you know, don't get me wrong, Cerrone has done nothing but impress since being in the UFC. He's on a six-fight win streak. 
Um, you know, his last loss came to Ben Henderson uh, for the WEC title in 2010, who's, you know, and Henderson's fighting Frankie Edgar in, uh, at the end of January. So, I mean, he's 4-0 in the UFC, and he was kind of getting a bad rap that, you know, he didn't finish fights and, and whatnot. But in reality, he's finished all three, uh, three or four fights, uh, you know, while in the UFC. So I, I think he's a guy who's definitely driven, and he's in a good camp with, uh, you know, Greg Jackson's team. So uh, I think both of these guys are going to, you know, pretty much stand there and bang and, and would be happy to go to the ground with their submission skills. So I, I think that's why it'll be a stalemate. I have Diaz via decision just because I think the reach is going to be what you know pretty much takes out Cerrone, but I, I could go either way, so I, I could be completely wrong. But I have Diaz via decision. Um, yeah, I'm gonna. I, this is I think going to be fight of the night. Uh, people in the chat room, Bill Brown and Richard Hansen, both like Donald Cerrone to win. Richard Hansen says uh, Cerrone title fight after this win. Bill Brown says I love Diaz brothers, but I'm going to go with Cowboy via decision. And then Green Bastard says bubbles equals Green Bastard. So that's his two cents. <laughs> How do you go um, wrong there? Yeah, so third point by the Green Bastard. <laughs> as far as the fight goes, I think, uh, like I said, I do think it'll be fight of the night. Diaz is in the division that he belongs in at 155. Um, he has faced a tougher competition if you look at the two fighters. If you look at the list of, of top ten guys that Nate Diaz has fought, I mean, he's probably fought eight or ten top ten guys from Melvin Gillard, uh, Roy McDonald, Clay, Clay Guida. You know, the list goes on. I'm not going to name them all, but he's a very slick fighter. He's very good everywhere, probably weakest in his wrestling, but, um, you know, good submission game, good boxing. Cesar Gracie came out a few weeks ago and said, you know, people are saying that the submission game in MMA is dead. Uh, you know, he said, I sort of agree with that, except for, you know, when the Diaz guys are fighting because, you know, they're so creative with their submissions that, it, you know, they're, they're relevant when they fight. Uh, but I, I love Donald Cerrone. 17 and three, won six straight. Like Dolan said, undefeated in the UFC. He's got three career losses. Uh, one to Jamie Varner, who we came back and defeated <laughs> later on, and the other two losses were to Benson Henderson. So he's got 20 career fights, and the only guy he's ever, um, you know, faced and not beaten was Ben Henderson. So he is a top lightweight. I think he's the top five in the world. I agree that if he gets this win, he's probably going to be in title contention. Uh, these guys got a little bit of beef when there was the press conference for this fight probably about two months ago. I think it was before they actually announced that they were going to be fighting each other, but Cerrone went over to Nate Diaz to shake his hand and just say, like, you know, hey, how are you? And, uh, like, Nate Diaz, like, smacked his hand out of the room and, like, told him to get the fuck out of his face or something. He's like, you know, man, we're in the same division. We're going to be fighting sometime. I'm not trying to put up fronts. I'm not trying to be friends with these other guys. He can go fuck himself. And then, uh, <laughs> you know, they showed an interview with Cerrone. Cerrone's like, you know what, man, like... I got that same go. I got that same fucking gene that you got. We can throw it anytime you want. So if he wants it to be like that, then it's going to be like that. Uh, My problem is, Nick. I never know what the Diaz brothers are thinking. I just wish they were more transparent. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. They, uh, they're, they're really political with the way they answer the questions. But um, I just think Cerrone's too big and too strong. He's too complete. I think he's a better kickboxer than Nate. He's bigger and stronger. He's got better wrestling, and I think he's got. Um, both are young guys, but I think Cerrone's at the upswing of his career, whereas Nate Diaz, I believe, is starting to sort of settle into that gatekeeper role. I think Cerrone's got a title run, um, a run of the title left in him, and I don't think Nate Diaz does, so I'm taking uh, Donald Cerrone uh, by unanimous decision. Ooh. Wow. Uh, it's a, this is a tough fight for me. You know, obviously, I, I love both these fighters. Um, you know, you've heard me uh, gush over Donald Cerrone in the past, and uh, <laughs> like a little I definitely... Girl. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, you know, um, I, I agree that Donald Cerrone is definitely uh, rising to the top, um, but I think Nate Diaz is back in in his natural weight class, like you guys uh, pointed out. Uh, I think he's a better fighter at 155. Uh, he's a little bit stronger down there. Um, no way. I don't know, dude. I'm a little, uh, God. Like I said, very on the fence. I think this definitely has potential to be fight of the night, like you said, Franco. Um, Cerrone's definitely the better kickboxer, but I think Diaz has the uh, the better ground game overall. As well. And um, I think it's going to be very back and forth. I'm going to go. I'm going to go with Nate Diaz by unanimous decision. I'm going to agree with Dolo here. I just think uh, his heart and determination is going to get him there. I think Cerrone. You know, he, he's got a big heart, too, and he definitely has a great game. But uh, he ha he's notorious for starting off slow, and I think that's going to be another problem in this fight, and that's why Nate Diaz is going to take it on points. So. Hey, Dubs, who's your favorite person in the Bible, Judas? 
I love Judas. I, I can't believe Judas that is. you're picking against Cerrone. I mean, I'm only upset because yeah. you and I have the exact same pits and you fucking <laughs> blow. Um, but on top of that, I mean, that's unbelievable, man. I mean, would you kill your mother? It sounds like you might. <sighs> only if I had to. You know, I, am fair. I going to get gold afterwards? <laughs> no, 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 no. He didn't get gold. He got silver. Judas oh, is a fucking silver. sucker. Yeah. But silver's not bad. Silver's a good, yeah. good, good, uh, good uh, thing if you're not going to get gold. I mean, it's, yeah. it's second well, best, isn't it? Yeah, but being the smartest <laughs> retard, dude, it's not too bad, but, yeah. you know, it's not the greatest <laughs> thing in the world. <laughs> Maybe what's even, uh, Cerrone's a big, he's a big 155-pounder, you know. Diaz is kind of long and lean, but, um, you know, Cerrone looks like a 170-pounder. I, I, I just think, I think wherever this fight goes, Cerrone has the advantage, and uh, I, I, I think he's a lot better than, than people really give him credit for. I think uh, I, I think he's got a shot at, at winning that title. Yeah, dude. I, I can't, I can't disagree a... with you, Franco. Yeah. I mean, I know Cerrone's got great subs, too, and everything. I just don't know if he's better on the ground overall. I think uh, Diaz definitely has the edge down there. I'm not saying it's a big edge. It might be a slight mm-hmm. edge, but, you know, I, I, I don't think you can give Cerrone the edge on the ground if it goes there. Well, I, I wouldn't give him the edge, but he's got 13 submissions, and the reason um, I, I think he's the fighter that's going to – dictate where it goes. I don't think Diaz has taken him to the ground, and I think if Cerrone wants to stand in kickbox, he's going to stand in kickbox, and if they go to the ground, Cerrone's a better wrestler, so he, he, I think he definitely winds up on top in a dominant position, but with a, with a guy, like I said, like I mean, Diaz, his submission game is so sort of wiry and unpredictable, he could definitely catch him at any time, but uh, I don't know, I'm really hoping, uh, I'm hoping Cerrone wins, because I do want to see him get a fight against, you know, probably a, a top three lightweight. Who do you think well, would be way next for him, Nick? If, say, say Cerrone wins this. Who, who would you think would be kind of queued up? Would you, would you have him fight uh, Gerard, or would you have him fight uh, Gray, you know, Maynard, Gray maybe. Maynard? Yeah. Gray, if Gray Maynard stays at 155, I would say if he gets a win here, maybe one more fight before the title. A Gray Maynard, maybe um, Anthony Pettis. Uh, you know, I'm not really sure, but I think it depends. If he comes out and he, and he you know, I, I really do. I think this is sort of going to be back and forth, probably 29-28. I think it's going to be a good fight. So uh, I think he probably gets one more fight before the title. But, you know, who the hell knows the way uh, the big, and stuff. Is Cerrone you know? big like Maynard and Gerard, though? Because when I mean, you look at those two and, like, they're, they're, it doesn't make sense that they're in 170. I mean, 155. Like, I know Cerrone's big, but, I mean, is, is he that big? Because he's not that imposing. No, but he, he, he's like a he's solid. Whereas yeah. I think a guy like Ray Maynard is probably better suited at 170 because the cut probably takes a lot out of him. Donald Cerrone, he, he's just he's sort he's not like a really not very muscular, but he's he's very solid. And he's I yeah. think he's about five eleven, you know five eleven maybe six feet, and uh, you know he's just like he's very solid. Where it looks like he probably cuts just the, the right amount of weight. He's probably you know 168, 170 by the time they fight. Whereas a Gray Maynard might be 180. Where uh, you know, I think he's probably he'd probably be better suited at, at welterweight, but I just think Cerrone's the perfect size for a lightweight, where he's still really big, but he's not cutting too much. Yeah, yeah, he's definitely big where it counts, though. Though, but uh, <laughs> oh, moving on to the next. Oh. Is that coming from experience? <laughs> well, it's coming from my dream. Right? <laughs> uh, I, move, moving on to the next fight, Pitts, John Fitch versus Johnny Hendricks. Um, this, I think this fight's pretty clear cut to call. What do you feel about it, Franco? Um, the human blanket, John Fitch. You all, you all know my thoughts yeah. about him. He's a, <laughs> definitely a solid fighter, but I'm tired of hearing about him screaming for a title shot. He got a title shot. He got the shit kicked out of him. And, uh, you know, he has, you know, I think he's uh, 5-0-1 in his last six fights. You see the draw against GS, I'm sorry, the draw against GS Penn, where a lot of people felt that he won that fight, but he wasn't dominant. By any stretch, um, he's, he's faced a couple top ten guys. He's a very solid fighter, 23 and three. Um, but if you look at his 27 career fights, he's got five knockouts, five submissions, and 13 decision victories. So he's more, you know, he's a decision fighter out of uh, AKA. A lot of people, he's he's the sort of fighter where there's a certain group of MMA fans that love him and think he's underrated, and then there's the group like myself who not a huge fan of him. I appreciate his skills, but I don't love watching him fight. And then you have uh, Johnny Hendricks, who I don't think has the name recognition of a John Fitz, but I think a lot of the casual fans are going to underestimate him in this fight. He's an elite wrestler with knockout power. Um, one, two of his last three fights. This is going to be a big step up in competition. 
His only other real step up was against Rick Story. He wound up losing that fight. That was when there was that hype around Rick Story, like he may be a, a title contender. But, um, you know, Fitz definitely wants to take this fight to the ground. It's not going to be as easy as people think. Um, I'm looking at the stats. Hendricks has avoided uh, about two-thirds of takedowns of, that were attempted on. He's got a 64% takedown defense. I think that this is the better overall fighter, but I just think this is a tough matchup for him. I think Hendricks is a better, pure wrestler, and he's going to keep him honest with his punchy power, and I'm taking Johnny Hendricks by decision. Wow, dude. I didn't, wow. I didn't see that coming. I really didn't because uh, I figured this was pretty clear cut. Um, no, I'm going to jump in here because I, I just, I'm shocked at what Nick had to say. I really thought this free, was, everybody was going to say, John Fitch, UD here, you know. I yeah, really I'm did. getting the smelling salt right now to pick myself off the yeah. floor, so I need <laughs> I, a minute. Thank I, you. I don't know what happened. All that I, I, you know, Green Bastard logged out even after he heard that. He just left. He had nothing to do, <laughs> you know. I mean, he was so, he was so <laughs> shocked. And he hung up, too. I had him on hold for 20 minutes, and he just decided to leave. So I guess uh, I guess you floored him there, Franco. Uh, I, I don't know what to say. I agree with you that Johnny Hendricks has definitely slept on. And, uh, you know, very underestimated here, but I just can't see him being able to pull it off. I think John Fitch is going to do what he does and, and, and lay on top of him for three rounds and, and take the UD, you know. Um, you know, maybe it might be a little bit tougher to get him down. You know, he might be able to keep it on the feet and trade a little bit, you know, earlier in the fight. But I, I think eventually John Fitch is going to, going to do uh, what he wants and take him down and just hold him there. Uh, but, you know, may, maybe I'm wrong. If, if, if I'm wrong and you're right, then I give up this fantasy bullshit, okay, and that's it because um, I, I don't know what else to do if you pick this fight right. Dola, what do you feel on this? I, it feels like you just threw out a loser leaves town, uh, you know, stipulation on this uh, fight. That's what it feels like. Please tell me I'm wrong. Um, uh, I don't know, dude. Uh, do, do I think it's, you know, I, 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 if that happened, if the Hendricks thing happened, I, I wouldn't put it at a Sarah GSP level, let's put it that way, right? right. Um, okay, yeah, true. But I, I, I would be worried about the layoff for Fitch if he had any style but laying on people. Um, you know, I, I think he's, you know, he had this, this shoulder surgery, so... Um, you know, he probably was inactive for some time, but he, he certainly, you know, he's been a wrestler his whole life and walked on at Purdue, and, you know, by the end of his career there, he was the captain of the team, so it shows you what kind of, you know, will and desire the guy has, so no doubt he will be, he will be in shape, but obviously, you know, fighting shape is very different than just training. Um, you know, as much as I hate Fitch, I, I, I cannot deny, you know, the numbers. Like Nick said, he's 5-0-1 in his last six. And before his loss to GSP, which was in 2008, he hadn't lost since uh, 2002 when he lost an early fight in his career to Wilson Govea, who had, you know, a short-lived but decent run in the UFC back in, you know, maybe the 2000, uh, you know, 2007 time frame. <laughs> But um, he, he's also up there, you know, even if he retires now, he's going to be up there with some guys who have done some impressive things. Um, I know this just because I'm an avid MMA fan, not because I read this on a, a website or anything. He's tied with Hoyce Gracie, Gray Maynard, JDS, and Machida with eight wins in a row in the UFC. So, he, uh, you know, with that being said, he has won his last nine fights via decision. Or I should say, sorry, yeah. he's gone. His last nine fights have gone to decision. So, well, I think we all know what we're in for here. The fact that Hendricks is a really good wrestler with, with solid striking, I think, will will certainly make it a good fight. I, I, Fitch will have his work cut out for him trying to get it to the ground, but I, I still feel like Fitch is probably going to win this fight, and, and it's not a disres, you know, disrespect to Hendricks. I, I think this is just too much of a, of a step up in competition for him. I think what he does have a chance with is the fact that this is a John Fitch coming off a layoff since February, so it's almost been a year. Um, yeah. If this were John Fitch who had been fighting consistently, I, I think that Nick might have had to think a little harder about that. But, you know, Franco and I are children. We both we like to go off of emotion. And if we don't like someone, we, <laughs> auto we automatically assume that that well, means no, that I think, God doesn't sorry. like them and they're going to lose. I think You're never going like to see a um, for John Fitch. I that think that Fitch is a better fighter. But uh, I just think it's the matchup thing. Yeah. I think Lesnar at this point is a better fighter than Overeem, too. I just think they're bad matchups. And, uh, yeah, the fact that I don't like Fitch probably played into it a bit, but... Um, yeah, but a better fighter doesn't always win a yeah, fight. That's absolutely. Right. I, I, just I completely feel, get it. Um, yeah. But, you know, I, I still dislike you immensely, so... 
um, you know, that's going to factor into this. But no, I, I think, you know, anybody who sleeps on Johnny Hendricks is probably somebody who's a casual fan and doesn't know who he is in the first place. So uh, luckily for, for uh, us, John Fitch is not one of those people. I have no doubt he respects the ally to Hendricks and knows exactly what he's right. in for, especially because he is a former wrestler. That is a fraternity. All wrestlers know who other wrestlers are and have a certain, you know, adoration and respect for each other because they know what the fuck they go through on a daily basis coming up, uh, you know. So I, I don't think Fitch will sleep on him, you know, at all. Fitch has a tough chin, man. He yeah. proved that when he got the balls beaten off of him by GSP when before GSP went on the rag and decided to lay on people. <laughs> this is when he was still finishing motherfuckers uh, like it was his job, which it is. Um, you know, that being said, yeah, I got, I got John Fitch out on a ledge. Uh, he is going to win via decision. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, like I said, Frank had great points, but with that layoff, you know, this is just scream safe fight, safe fight, safe fight, and John Fitch's style really is a very safe way to win a fight. So, you know, he needs to win. He ran his mouth while he was injured, so I think it's a safe fight. But, but like I said, Franco, if you got this one right, I'm going to fucking... I'm giving up on this fantasy shit. All right. <laughs> this is going one or two ways, though, dude. Like Franco is going strong right now, so I know somebody's going to be in good shape by the end of this weekend, and somebody's going to be fucked. <laughs> I hope it's Franco. Yeah. Maybe I'll crawl <laughs> back into this thing. Moving on to the next fight pits: Vladimir the Janitor Matryoshenko against Alexander the Mauler Gustafsson. Uh, Dola, who you like in this one? Uh, I'm gonna go with Gustafson here, man. Uh, I, I love the janitor. They're, you know, he's he's a guy who's. I mean, he's 40 years old. He's done it all in the sport. He. Uh, I wouldn't put him on, uh, you know, the Couture and uh, and Dan Henderson level, but he is he is 40 years old. So he's a guy who kind of defies, yeah. you know, the uh, the laws of, of modern athletics as far as when you should be winding down, and let alone in a combat sport. But um, you know. The janitor has a ton of experience. He's fought all over the world. He was undefeated in the IFL. Um, he's 2-0 and after he got the balls beaten off of him by John Jones. But those two wins, you know, they're back-to-back first-round knockouts, which I think is what he needed, a guy of his age. Um, so I, I think that it's just a matter of timing. I think Gustafson is an absolute beast. He's 12-1, he's and one and he, uh, he's the reason Matt Hamill isn't a fighter anymore. After Hamill got, you know, got the shit kicked out of him and, uh, uh, you know, decided he didn't want to do this anymore. So I, I think he's, he's going to go into the radio world. Um, but uh, uh, I, I think that, yeah, yeah, I, I think he's going to run a soundboard for, for us. <laughs> You're up. Uh, <laughs> we're going to hell. There's no two ways about it. <laughs> but, uh, but, what? Matthew Matthew Sanko's seven and three in the UFC, you know, in this last stand and he's won five of his last six and, and like I said before, he's fought a ton of people outside of the UFC even, but you know, he fought Big Nog, Tim Bosch, Jason Lambert, guys like that. Um, you know, Gustafson's eight uh, I'm sorry, he's twelve and one, but he's finished eleven of those fights. Eight knockouts, yeah. three submissions. He's a guy who just goes in for the kill. They both like to stand and bang, and I, I just think that's probably not going to end well for Matsushenko. Gustafson has seven wins in the first round. So, um, you know, with Matsushenko finishing his last two fights in the first round, I think it's going to give him a false sense of, I can try to finish him early, plus being 40. He's probably not going to have the best cardio, so he's going to, I think, walk right into that. I got Gustafson being a first-round knockout. Yeah, I think it's a pretty safe thing. I don't need you to go here, Franco, because I think this is another pretty clear-cut fight. Um, I, I definitely got to agree with you, Dolo. I think Gustafsson's on the rise. He's he's definitely a finisher. Uh, I think uh, Matt Shank is going to play right into it. Like you said, he's going to come out swinging. I, I hate to admit it, but uh, we're thinking the same way again. I got Gustafsson uh, winning first-round KO. Well. Oh, dude, I'm fucked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Looks like Franco's running away with this one. To pick, because uh, you guys... You know, make good points. I'm a, a big Matt Yushanko fan. I like him a lot. He's a, he's a really tough guy, very physically strong guy. You know, he's la- he, big Dick Hansen said in the chat room, his last two losses are to uh, Little Nogara and John Jones. I, I think in that John Jones fight, um, I think he had enough. I think that fight could have been a little bit better. He got caught in a bad position early, but I think he's crafty enough. I think he could have been a little bit more competitive in that fight. He knocked out Jason Brills his last time out in 20 seconds. Um been fighting since 1997, and Gustafsson, 12-1, and 
I think, uh, you know, 4-1 and one in the UFC. His only loss to Phil Davis. He's finished 11 out of his 12 career wins. Like you said, he finished Matt Hamill's career. Um, this was the toughest fight for me to pick, and uh, I just think that maybe uh, Gustafs is going to underestimate Matt Yushanko because he's 40 years old, and Matt Yushanko is really dangerous in that first round, and uh, the kid's young enough, I think, to go in there and mix it up with him, which I think is exactly what the janitor wants. So I'm going to take Matt Yushanko first round. Now. Wow! <laughs> wow! Ooh, you're straight up, oh, dude. Shit! I'm, I got to take a pause here. I definitely got to take a pause here. I wasn't expecting that. Well, no, I don't know if it's that dramatic. But Franco's going to rape our mouths this, uh, this Friday, I think. Well, I could wind up uh, well in third place, too. That yeah, one, exactly. One I hope so. I think God, Franco's I so. got the Vaseline out, and he's presenting right now with that pucker and a-hole. He's going to get slanted <laughs> straight in the juicy <laughs> hat this weekend. <laughs> that sounds delicious. Yeah, wow. absolutely. And then, uh, hey, Nick, and then after that, we can watch the fights. <laughs> yeah. sick, but... Well, the last fight on the card, um, you know, I, again, I, I don't think it's that difficult to pick. Pitts Nam fan versus Jimmy the Kid Hetes. Uh, Frago, who you got in this one? Uh, yeah, I don't, I, I'm hoping that we're all on the same page here. Who the hell knows, though? I think so. Nam fan's uh, two and four in his last six. He looked pretty good against Lana Garcia's last time out, but I think he definitely needs uh, a win here or a fight of the night you know, maybe lost to stay on the roster. I don't think he's been uh, that great in the UFC, but uh, he's got crisp striking, good technique. Doesn't really have too much power. And this kid, uh, Jimmy Hayes, is 9-0 with nine submissions. Yeah. Five foot nine, so he's a decent size uh, featherweight. He's a, he's a great uh, jiu-jitsu fighter. He's only 24 years old. His UFC debut was against Bruce Leroy. He submitted him. Um, really hasn't faced a veteran like Nam Fan, who has been around for a while. That fan hasn't been submitted in uh, 26 career fights, but I think that's going to change on Friday. I'm taking uh, yeah. Jim Hattie's second round of submission. Yeah, I, I think that's a good pick, Franco. Uh, I got the same exact pick, and, uh, you know... He, it's got to be that way, you know. I mean, Nam Fan, like you said, he's a good all-around fighter. Uh, not much power behind those strikes, but, you know, I just can't see him pulling this one off. It, it would be... Uh, Pretty good for him, obviously. I think he needs a win to stay in the UFC as well, but I, I just can't see it happen. This kid is definitely a beast, um, at least on the ground, and uh, he's coming in, and he wants to continue this role. What do you feel, Dolo? I'm just excited we're going to get another Nam Fan press conference. Um, so, <laughs> uh, I just hope he doesn't that go was to the pretty hospital. exciting last time. Yeah, I'm just hoping that this, this fucking kid doesn't rip his arm clean off his body and they have to sew it back on. <laughs> because every time a question will get asked, he like raises his eyebrows and like point around. And they're just me? like, huh? "Yeah, Is we want to ask the janitor huh? a question." And he's like, "Oh," and they're like, "No, no, oh. not Janko. We literally want to ask the fucking janitor instead of Nam Fam a question." Um, <laughs> I just love the last press conference that talked to the guy who beat more than him. It's like, hey, Matthew Janko wasn't on this card. No, we mean the janitor, asshole. We want to talk to him instead of Nam Fam. Um, I, I, Nam Fam is. <laughs> Not a world beater, but a guy puts on a, you know impressive fights. I don't think he'll ever get walked through. Nobody's ever gonna gonna say that. He's got a ton of experience and. Uh, again, not the most personable guy. He's not going to blow your socks off, but, I mean, he, he does get into exciting fights. The, I, I want to preface my next statement with I am picking uh, Jimmy Hetis, but uh, what concerns me is that he does have to win via submission, and I don't normally like going with guys that are that one-dimensional, but it, it'll probably be on the level of, you know, your boy Jakey Poo, where they said, love that you know, I love he, that, that Jakey Poo has, you know, a puncher's so equivalent good. of a knockout punch with his mm. submissions when he was fighting GSP. That's what you heard GSPs can't say. This kid clearly is on that level. I mean, he, he's won every <laughs> single fight by, uh, you know, submission, so it gets to a point where nowadays with YouTube and the Internet and whatnot, even the guys he fought early on outside of the first two or three had a pretty good idea what this kid wanted to do, and he's continued to be able to put people in positions to submit them. Uh, the thing that I really like about him and what speaks to the fact that although he is – I don't want to say one-dimensional because he is an, an excellent judo practitioner. He is, you know, uh, um, he's won multiple contests. He's a two-time gold medalist in the amateur. It's called the Keystone State Games. 
which is pretty much just like, you know, it's amateur games, right. it's amateur athletic uh, competitions in all different, you know, forms of mixed martial arts, uh, you know, at a, on a broader scale. So he is a good judo practitioner, but he is extremely well-versed in the submission game. It's not like he's a kid who has to get an arm or has to get a neck and it has to be in the perfect position. Of his nine wins, he's got two triangles, four rear nakeds, one guillotine, mm. one heel hook, and one arm bar. So he can catch you wherever he needs to, whatever you know, you're going to do to try to counteract and combat his submission game. He will then roll from there and then just use another form or style of submission to actually put you out. So I have him, uh, I have him in a second-round tap-out as well. The only reason I have nice. second is because I really just respect Nam Pham and think he's extremely game. And, and that's why it wouldn't be quick, and he's going he's gonna to have a good game plan. He, he's not a fighter who goes out there and fights on emotion, Nam Pham. So I do right. I know for a fact he's not going to run out there and just go ape shit. So I, we'll see how the temperament is of Hettis and what's going to go from there. So I, I just think at the end of the day he's going to be too much. He's, he's too young, and I think he'll probably put Pham out of the UFC. I, I definitely I think that's a safe pick. Obviously we all agree on it. But, uh, hey, Franco. Yes, sir. Uh, have you run any blogs lately? <laughs> no, it's actually been about two months. Uh, I've been super lazy with that lately. What an asshole. Well, you know what? It's been super lazy since we played this. So how about we do this? We haven't done this in weeks either. A new era has dawned in blogging. Log on to thexlog.com and experience new standards and quality in commentary and analysis. Powered by RotoExperts.com, the XLog.com brings together the top expert bloggers with all the very best the Internet has to offer. You don't have to search for the most compelling and entertaining posts and writers anymore. They will be at your one central hub for high quality. So join us as a new revolution begins in sports and entertainment only at the XLog.com. That's T-H-E-X-L-O-G.com. That's right, everybody. The XLog.com. Remember to check it out. Well, boyos, we've got uh, about 14 minutes left. What do you want to hit up now? Well, dude, uh, well, I like to talk to a couple. Uh, Christoph, uh, and this just like got announced, Christoph Sozinski just retired. <coughs> all dude. Really? With yeah. all the yeah, yeah. He got retired? Out. Yeah, he just got knocked out in the first round. Uh, it was the last event. Uh, I think it was on Spike. Uh, yeah, so I, yeah, he's been around for a long time. He's been fighting forever. So uh, Dana, it was on Dana White's. Uh, video blog or whatever. I just read it a couple minutes ago. That's like something that just happened. Yeah, he was a guy who had a ton of fights by the time he got on the Ultimate Fighter, and yeah, uh, exactly. he, he and his wife run a promotion up in Canada. Uh, you know, kind of like an independent uh, oh, really? martial arts, yeah, uh, corporation. Just uh, you know, kind of like a smaller, uh, you know, kind of king of the cage type thing where it's, it's, it's you know small on a smaller scale, but um, yeah, he he, he kind of runs that as well. So uh, you know, a guy who's had a real good career. Always a game fighter, had two great wars with Stefan Bonner. Um, so, yeah, I mean, certainly will be missed because he's a guy, no matter what, you knew you were going to get your money's worth. And, and certainly with all the tasks, looked like he was in the Russian mob. But, you know, I don't want to say anything. <laughs> um, what do you boys, uh, what'd you boys get for Christmas? Was everybody happy with their presents? Was Santa good? Santa was great to me. I got some, you know, vid games, some jeans, you know. It was, uh, wow. it was a pretty sweet Christmas, you know. Like, I felt like I was 10 again. That's yeah, great. I got How about some, you, uh, I got some clothes and whatnot, you know, some, uh, that's too exciting, a couple books. I got a, a jacket for work. Uh, Woo! You know. hey, book? <laughs> that's nice. Yeah. You got something to put drinks on, dude. Oh, dude, my life's fucking over. It, it became official this year. Uh, you know, once I started getting presents and, and none of the bags or presents had my name on it, it had mine and my future wife's name on it, now we're, <laughs> we're you know, we're a, a fucking entity now. Um, so basically, um, I, I go open one present and I just looked at it a little bit and I, I needed a, I was hoping I'd get a vest that I, because I needed it for all the douche chills that were running down my spine. I didn't get the vest, but I handed the bag over to the, the future Mrs. D and, uh, she pulled out a caroler, like a figurine, what? like, you know, like you could put on like a mantle and you could have a, eventually build like a collection. Of Carolyn. Oh, like, so you're gonna be different. getting uh, that's gonna be an annual present from the gift giver. <sighs> I, if I'm so lucky, dude, I, I'm I'm just hoping I fucking die before next that's year. That's probably the worst getting, present ever. He said about getting sort of joint gifts and being one entity. 
that sucks when you're receiving gifts, but it's fucking awesome when you're giving them because <laughs> yeah. you give all of their family, all of your family, everything from you and her. So it's like it makes everything a lot easier when you can give one gift as an entity because you're now going to be married, so you don't have to give separate gifts to everybody. Awesome. Oh, dude, like if we got like a trampoline as an entity, I wouldn't mind, you know, the collaboration. <laughs> but like <laughs> we, we might as well super, get – Super sucker. Yeah, we might we might as well get double double ice dildos here, dude. Like and just Aww. fucking meet in the middle, like waiting in the tramp. Like what's what's going on? It's 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 effing brutal, man. It's it's unbelievable. And you get all like the work stuff and like oh, I just looking at it, I was like, Oh my god, like how do you resist the earth to not smack it out of her hands onto the ground and smash it? I don't know, I'm man. Uh, I'm just, yeah, since I'm Irish, I was hoping that, like, the head of the carol was screwed off and it was really a flask. Like, my old man would be winking. Like, dude, you know they're jacking that. What am I, a pussy? Uh, and then I realized that he's a gaping pussy, so it was a caroler. Uh, how's, uh, how's Black Steve holding up? He's got to be hanging from the ceiling fan by now. Doesn't he work at GameStop? <laughs> was it, like, through the holiday season? I didn't hear that, dude, but I heard something about hanging from the ceiling and suicide's funny, so. Why not say, doesn't... It wasn't Steve, your your roommate, wasn't he crazy uh, at work through the holiday season? Oh yeah, no, yeah, he's fucking been working around the clock. So I, I don't know what's going on. I guess uh, I assume he's five. I haven't seen him much lately, so you know I have no big reports. Maybe he'll call in. Maybe he's listening now, but you know the guy doesn't even listen to us anymore. Fuck him. Yeah, I was like, you know, it was weird. Like when I turned the fan on, a shadow's been swinging around the room, and there's been a thing. I didn't think to look up, but now that I noticed. Steve's fucking hanging from the fan, and <laughs> the fact that he's dropped 30 pounds, he might have been up there for a few weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Poor bastard. He sick fuck. Yeah, yeah. What well, do you boys think of this one, though? In, in, in serious MMA news, not to get, uh, you know, completely uh, uh, sidetracked. Um, so I had nothing prepared for this portion because, you know, I was really hoping to – I had Green Bastard on hold for so long, I was going to try to go back to him to fill this time in with that, and he oh. fucking pussed out after fucking, I guess, 15 minutes. So. Well, i got to tell you, Go it's on, a smooth though. transition, so you you can't tell that okay. you're unprepared. Um, yeah. Although <laughs> MMA is certainly a rising sport, uh, it was a little disappointing to hear that John Jones, after the year he had, um, there's been a lot of gripes in the MMA world that he did not get one vote for the Associated Press for the, um, you know, the athlete of the year. And uh, what is really the major beef with it is not so much that John Jones didn't get a, a even one vote because MMA is still a rising sport and it's a very polarizing sport. You know, like, it's, like we've said and, and we had uh, Randy Gordon on a couple weeks ago, it's not even legal in the biggest city in the world. And, you know, it's, it's, it's certainly on the rise. But what is more upsetting is the people that did get a vote, you know, you can say, I'm not that mad. John Jones didn't get a vote, even though he had an amazing year. He's 23. He is the 205-pound champion of one of the fastest-growing sports in the world, if not the fastest-growing sport. And he's very charismatic. He's polarizing. But who's, these are the people that also did get votes. Uh, Aaron Rodgers won it. I don't think anybody's going to say he didn't yeah. deserve it. And, you know, you got guys like Justin Verlander. You could throw in Drew Brees. I get what it. Ever but um, people who got votes were Sprinter uh, Usain Bolt, Surfer Kelly Slater, and then, of course, everyone's dark horse, marathon swimmer Diana Nyad. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, are you fucking kidding me, dude? I would like to see Cyborg go find Nyad and throat job her, and then we'll see how many votes she gets. Uh, that's fucking the firm of action. I'm sure it's psycho. <laughs> you think that's so, the firm of action that's best. Everybody needs to fucking vote. That was unbelievable. I mean, so, I mean, for the year that MMA has had, and obviously we look at things through a different lens because it is a major part of, you know, the things we like to do. And, you know, when you go on the Internet, these are things we look at. We may still be in the minority. Do you think now this is a sobering thing for MMA that, holy shit, maybe we're really not as big as we think we are as, as far as our biggest, youngest guy can't even get the love and get one vote? No, I don't. I, I, I don't think it's big at all. I think most people don't understand what it is. I think, and the people that are, I think a lot of people say, oh, shit, they're going to watch it. It's not as violent as they'd like it to be. I think I think most people think it's a lot more violent than it is, and when they turn it on, they find it boring. Yeah. I think that the, uh, I believe that the Fox contract is going to help them a lot because people are going to realize that 
it's not just, uh, you know, two barbarians swinging wildly at each other, that it actually is a sport. I think the longer that it's on Fox, um, you know, if this was if three years from now, when, if this sport was on Fox for three years, I think a guy like that would get a couple votes. But, uh, I, you know, I, I, don't, I don't think uh, I have no uh, sort of, um, you know, thoughts that it's more popular. I, I don't think it's very popular right now. I think there's a, a core audience that watches it, but I think, it is, I think the popularity will grow with the Fox deal. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we got a caller, so I'm going to go to him now. Hey, 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 caller, you're on the air. What's up? Yo, boys. Uh, I was just What's confused on? on why I was introduced on the show as Black Steve. <laughs> oh, Black <laughs> oh. <laughs> Answer to it, son. I, I have to let you guys know I'm very offended by that. Oh, shit. <laughs> See, I didn't see in the well, chat, Blacko, I, was what you say I, was to, I was trying to pick on the wounded duck that wasn't around. I figured you were... Uh, Dealing with the returns at the store. Yeah, that's the thing. You never know where I'm at. You can't be making these comments. <laughs> Are you the green bastard, Steve? I mean, I, I know that you don't like Steve's to be referred to as black, Steve. Steve. Can you be green, Steve? <laughs> hey, I got Steve-o, many aliases. Steve, in all seriousness, dude, how you doing with your bears? How are you, bub? <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's a little low. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm being serious, I was out doing my... Fantasy championship and in my other league. Otherwise, that'd be really sad. Oh, all right, all right. It looks like you put all the effort in that league going for what one and thirteen in this. You fucking, you're terrible, dude. Oh, that sounds like a bitter guy over there who wants some cry soup, Dubs. Easy, easy, so, my uh, man. Bill Brown just made a good point in the chat room. Next week, I'll refer to you as Irish Steve, so we'll get we'll get a nice uh, a nice mix, fifty fifty, so we can cover all bases. Yo, gun. <laughs> Yo, gun's back. <laughs> Um, Steve, who do we got in the uh, main event, Lesnar or Overeem? Um, I think Overeem's going to take it. Nice. Fuck I think you, uh, I think he's just going to outstrike him. I'm hanging up on you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I try not to ever, ever, ever back you, so. <laughs> yeah, obviously. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I, I think, think it's he's going to go. outstrike him. Mm. What was that? I didn't say anything. No, all right. I'm reading things in the chat room. I'm leaving you there. You you finished this up, big man. <laughs> all right, I, I, I got to do your job. Yoga you predicts over him. He agrees with you. He said, by Uber knee, followed by pound him out. I disagree, Yogan. And, uh, Steve, I disagree with you, so I'm going to hang up on you as well. That's fine. It won't be the first time. All right, right Steve. Exactly. Don't let, don't Go let bears. the races keep you down, dude. Don't let the races keep I you receive. down like Nick Frank. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Unbelievable. Uh, this, uh, fucking Junie Browning thing. Yeah, that was insane. Yes. Yeah, I didn't know what was going on there. He turned himself he, he in finally, some, right? He got in some bar fight over in somewhere in like Europe. I'm not sure exactly where. And uh, apparently, he like he lumped a couple people up, and he also like hit a girl or something. He brought him to the hospital, and then he fled from the hospital because he feared he was going to get arrested. And then he was trying to talk to the United States Embassy about protecting him, and he was. He was on the run from the police, yet he was making all these, like, Facebook posts and tweeting all this stuff, and eventually uh, he just turned himself in, like, last week. Dude, um, whatever that fight was was ridiculous. Like, obviously there's two sides to each story, and knowing, you know, seeing the footage of Judy Brown, uh, you know, on, on the Ultimate Fighter, he's obviously a polarizing figure, and then when you get booze in the mix, he's just an asshole. We've seen it. He's not a guy who backs down from a fight. But it, whatever happened in that fight, I mean, you could still, I saw a picture online. He got stabbed a couple times, like in the leg. He got stabbed in the head. He he absolutely got he got the shit kicked out of him. He got his head split he, open. Yeah, he got it split clean open, dude. He has, like, a bunch yeah. of staples running down the center of his head. Then he leaves and was getting, you know, he went to the hospital. The other guys who he beat up were in the hospital. Something kind of went down. They got separated. And then the cops kind of just took his statement, and he even said, look at me, who won the fight? Clearly I got rolled. So the cop just <laughs> let him be for a little bit. He left, went on the run, and then he, apparently he was receiving death threats. I don't know where the truth is. I'm sure it's somewhere in the middle. The picture I saw, there is literally staples holding this kid's head open, though, as if it's just it was like an ass crack up the middle. He got completely <laughs> split. He got stabbed in the head a few times and stabbed. He was losing a lot of blood, and then he was on the run. I don't know what's going to happen. Well, yeah. obviously, Junie Browning's a very rational, rational human being. So I'm going by everything that he says. 
He was a saint that night. He did nothing to deserve this. They just jacked him outside and then dragged him inside the club and beat the balls off of him. Um, you know, he was running for his life because he thought the authorities were going to uh, bring him back over there so they could they could kill him. So, obviously, that's not the case because he turned himself in. And, and, Franco, did they end up releasing him again, or is he still in jail? Uh, I don't know, honestly. I just uh, I, I do most of my uh, MMA stuff and my Twitter stuff up on uh, at work, and I haven't worked in four days, so I, I haven't really been up on the stories. Oh. Well, Franco, how do you find time to do to look up those stories and go to clan meetings? Uh, I don't know how that how that works. <laughs> and how come you don't refer to Judy? How come you don't refer to Judy Browning as White Junie? You fucking bigot! Unbelievable the company I got to share on this show. An animal. Called, the day after Jesus' birthday. I use my iPhone at the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> right at the day after Jesus is born. Unbelievable. Unreal. Well, we got 30 seconds left uh, if, if uh, the counter's right here because it's fucking up like crazy. So for all I know, the show's off the air already. Um, everybody remember to check out Roto Experts. Check out the xlog.com. Check out Nick Frank at nfrankrotox. Check me out at Cauliflower, the number four year at Twitter. And uh, Dolo, stalk you on Facebook. Oh, per- perpetually, my man. Come find me. Absolutely. Me in the green bathroom. All right, everybody. Thanks for checking us out. Cheer! in my hand.